Hey Audacious Church and friends, welcome to our devotions. We're in Proverbs today, we're in Proverbs 25. I hope you're doing well wherever you're tuning in from today, whether it's at home, it's at work, it's on the way somewhere. We're so grateful that you've made the decision to grow in God and grow as a Christian in our devotional series. We hope that they're blessing you. We love doing them. Let us know if you're enjoying it. Drop a message in the comments. Shoot us an email. So great to have you with us today. My name is Lee Brown and my wife Lysandra and I, we are the campus pastors at our Chester campus. The best campus in Audacious Church. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. See you later. Just kidding, we love everyone at Audacious Church. We have many incredible campuses and locations and many more on the way. The future is bright at Audacious Church. Well, it's great to have you with us. Like I said, we're in Proverbs 25 and today we're doing a deep dive on one of the Proverbs of Solomon. So the proverb goes like this, Proverbs 25 and verse 15 is what I wanna hinge on. It says this, through patience, a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break the bone. Ouch. Right now, the men of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, are compiling more of the Proverbs of Solomon. There's loads of epic Proverbs in Proverbs 25. There's some epic two-liners, one-liners. They're brilliant. You should do a deep dive and check them out. But this verse 15 is what I really want to focus in on and hone in on today. And I wonder really quick, have you ever acted too soon? Have you ever been a little bit impatient and overstepped the mark, went too quickly when you knew in the moment it might have been better to hang on and wait just a little bit longer? Now, when I think about this in my life, I go back a couple of years to when my granny asked me to come visit her in Redditch, just near Birmingham. So I said, of course, of course, I'd love to come visit. Hey, I'll stay over. We'll hang out. It'll be epic. So it was after church on a Sunday, and I don't know if you have this, but we love to have Sunday afternoon naps. They're the crash nap after church on a Sunday. If you've got kids, probably not as likely. You're waiting till they go to bed to get an early night. But for us, we love Sunday naps. And for me, I was napping in Sunday afternoon, and I overslept. I forgot to set an alarm. So I woke up confused, dazed. I should have left an hour previous to go down to be on time to visit my grandmother. I was way behind. I was late. The clock was ticking. And I thought to myself, I've got to get down there as quick as I possibly can. So I looked at my phone, forgot to charge it. It was on 10% battery. But I thought, ever the optimist, that 10% would last me driving from Chester all the way down to Redditch. So I jumped in the car, threw the sat-nav on, I had no idea where I was going, driving down the motorway, and my phone ran out of battery. How many people seen that coming? Phone was dead, and I had no idea where I was going. I pulled up to a service station, opened up my laptop, and tried to memorize the directions from the motorway all the way into Redditch to where my granny lived. So I tried to memorize it, left turn here, carry on for about two miles, then, you know, take it right here. But church, as you can imagine, it didn't go so well. Two hours later of driving around the countryside, praying, totally lost, I pulled into some random pub, ran in and just shouted to everybody in the pub, help me, I'm Irish and I'm lost. To which the pub owner comes up to me, gives me step-by-step -step directions, practically drew me out a map to get from where I was down to my granny's, arriving literally two and a half, three hours late. My granny, obviously really worried, had no idea where I was, but we were thankful that I made it to Redditch. How many of you have been there in the same situation where you rushed something too quickly? And I reckon all of us have had times in our lives when this has happened, when we've totally undervalued the importance of patience. If I had have just waited 30 minutes, let my phone charge, I would have arrived on time and wouldn't have ended up in that dilemma. I reckon for you it's been when you've woken up, you're maybe late on your way to work, you've rushed out, you've forgotten your lunch, you've been in a disagreement possibly, 
and neither side are listening to each other and suddenly voices get raised, it escalates, it goes from bad to worse. Maybe you've jumped to conclusions thinking in the moment that it was discernment when in reality it was nothing more than suspicion. And the danger is, audacious church and friends, is if we are slow to be patient and quick to be hasty, we'll forever find ourselves putting the foot in it, making assumptions, adding fuel to the fire. And if we undervalue the art of patience, we'll always rush the process. And I wanna suggest one thing to you, watching right now from wherever you are in the world. And that's this, that hastiness crashes against the shore, whereas patience navigates choppy waters. Today, church, choose patience. Proverbs 25, 15, I'll say it again. Through patience, a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break a bone. Hastiness truly is the red flag, whereas patience is a measured decision. Hurriedness trips over itself, whereas patience chooses its steps wisely. And when we underestimate the importance of patience, we'll hurry to get to the place, but we'll rush the process and we won't have the character that is needed when we get there. Before you get to the goal that you've got for yourself, before you get to the dream, before you get to the destination that you're praying and believing for, whatever it is that you're holding on to, working towards, there's always a preparation process along the way because God always does a work in us before he does a work through us and he is committed to doing a work in us before he does the work through us. If we rush patience, we'll rush the preparation. You might have heard it said before in the past, I certainly did growing up. That phrase that's not quite true says this, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. How many people know that's not true? And Solomon says here, and a gentle tongue can break a bone. What is he really getting at? Well, he's talking about how the tongue has the power of life and death. And you'll read throughout the whole Bible about the power of our speech, of our declaration, our confession. It has the ability to create, to prophesy, to build, to tear down. You might have heard Pastor Glenn's message many moons ago that was entitled, Loose Lips Sink Ships. There is power in the tongue. And Solomon is talking about marrying the art of patience and also using and choosing your words wisely. Today, church, I reckon, if we made a decision to let patience persuade us, we wouldn't rush the process. Today, church, don't allow fast food culture to rush the process that God is doing in you right now. And when you choose to be patient, you'll see things clearly when you take that moment to zoom out. You'll realize that God has you exactly where he needs you to be to do a work in your heart right now. And when you choose to be patient, you'll not act too quickly and trip over yourself. Hastiness crashes against the shore, whereas patience navigates choppy waters. Today, church and friends, choose patience. And I reckon if we all took Solomon at his word in Proverbs 25 verse 15, we might be slightly slower, but we'd be all the more wiser. Today, church, make a decision to not rush the process that God has you in. Choose to be patient. Choose to respond, not react, and let patience today be your guide. See, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that we might not be good at already, but it's something that God is interested in working out through us in relationship with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, let's commit to grow in patience and watch what God will do in us and through us. Let's pray together wherever you're watching from. Father God, I pray for every person watching right now, would you bless them? Teach them the art of patience this week. Would we be all the more wiser because we were all the more patient. God, we bless you, we trust you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen.
Well, it's been brilliant to have you with us on Proverbs 25 today. Hope you have an incredible day. Believe for great things ahead. Love you, church. We'll catch you really soon.